An Occasion is a Rare Occasion by Diane Seuss. An occasion is a rare occasion, rare as a bloodbath in a barn. In our county, not one bloodbath in a barn, but a red bird in a birdbath is ho hum. A field is ho hum. A horizon is just a girl yawning at the edge of a field holding a long curved stick. She remembers reading Ho Hum in a book, and it was odd to her, though not odd enough to be an occasion. Rhubarb leaves curling up out of the dirt in the spring are not an occasion. Things that happen on their own without help are Ho Hum like popping out a baby. But a baby shower is an occasion. A small occasion, but it counts. There are cupcakes to be frosted blue, and balloons to blow up with the breath of our own bodies, though now there are helium tanks. Have you sucked in enough? Did your voice sound high and strange? That is a miniature occasion. But then your voice goes back to its usual ragged self. So in the end, sucking helium is a temporary occasion. All occasions are temporary in our county. A silo in a field is ho-hum. But if it burns, it is a temporary occasion. So many things burn that fires are in danger of becoming ho-hum. Only the strange fires count. The supermarket fire, with its exploding jars of pickles. The outdoor movie screen fire. The firehouse fire. In our county, clouds are bags heavy with empties gathered from parking lots of strip malls and shut down pattern factories. Soon, there will be enough to cash in. Soon the sky will rain quarters. Enough for bread and bologna and squares of American cheese and cereal shaped like stars. The milk in the bowl will go pink with the pinkness of the stars. That will be an occasion. I went downtown and went down by Diane Seuss. I went downtown and went down on the We Buy Gold guy. I have a thing for debauched talksters in ape costumes. Before that, I loved the girl who holds the sign outside Little Caesars advertising the two for one pizza deal. Tragic life in long tresses. She was ghostly the way she beckoned to oncoming traffic. Then the birthday clown. Nothing worse than jamming a rubber nose over your nose for a paycheck. Myself, I've been a fetish shop cashier, a fudge worker in vacation land. Played Spidora in the haunted house, my head sticking out of the poison gland of the tarantula suit. Wrote dime store romances. Was paid a dollar once for a pornographic haiku. Waxed the big slide. Windexed the jukebox glass. Supervised the shooting gallery. Toilet worker at the sugar factory which once involved scooping a wedding ring out of the loo. The best was cleaning splooge off the walls in the peep show gallery and laundering Trixie's thong. Some of us claw our way to the bottom, transcend downward. There at the hub of the drain we swirl. Free beer. A footnote, Diane Seuss said that uh, when she was a child, she would um, put on puppet shows and lure adults by offering free beer. She said we 
didn't have money for beer or or puppets, but uh, it was a it was a form of imagining, and you know, she wasn't lying, and uh, that imagining was a form of hope. Free beer by Diane Seuss. I'm the one who can hold a mouthful of salt. Bring him here. The fool dressed in prison stripes. I can pray for him, even though his eyes are wild. I can de-louse the rat. When I was a kid, I invited them all to a puppet show. There were no puppets. I'd planned no show. Free beer, I said. And they came. I've seen a puppet theater. It resides in the black cavern behind my eyes. Thoughts are puppets dangling from their tangled strings. Bring them here. The one spinning on gloom's rotisserie. I'll section an orange for the wretched bastard. I'll ladle him up a mugful of tears. Free beer, I'll say. <laughs> no, there is no beer. Laundromat hit by tornado by Diane Seuss. The bride died. The girl in love with milkweed pods and God died laundering her sunbonnet. The baby born into the hands of fog and nuns who falsely claimed she was Chinese died. She was not Chinese. Three dogs sparring over a stolen bone died. Young wife died up to her nipples in dirty diapers. Widow died bleaching her dead husband's shirts for donation. Lonely lady died, skewered on her loneliness. Liar spiked on her lie. Teenage girl died, contemplating her hitchhike thumb. Hussy died, watching her husband stealing clothes spiral in the dryer. I strode shoeless from the rubble with my wicker hamper of folded clothes, having survived the twister of my foolishness, the funnel cloud of my warped desire. It's Like This by Diane Seuss. The prayers of non-believers are beautiful, like women desperate to be beautiful are beautiful but beautiful in a way that makes God sick a bit, like one too many pedophores. God's also turned off by the prayers of believers. They're sweaty and overwrought, not like stalkers, but like window peekers who tend toward introversion and stuttering. Did you know that? I once cured a window peeker by setting him up with some speech therapy. God doesn't even go that far. God's thing is, go ahead and set up your own speech therapy. God doesn't like crowds or cuddling and hates gifts, which end up stranding the recipient in the desert of endless gratitude. Begging God doesn't work. I know begging doesn't work. If it worked, I wouldn't be so sad. In fact, if you beg, you're sunk. Ask Gerard Manley Hopkins. Ask Skinny Neck Vessel, one of those fat guys on whom bullies hung a fatal nickname. I tried doing some research on the surname Neck Vessel, but all I got was info on carotid artery disease. How would you like to be Skinny Neck Vessel? even for a day. A guy who had to enter the door of his own house sideways. A guy so fat that his only comfort was three TV dinners and a Mrs. Smith's Dutch apple pie. 
God's point of view is that being God is a lot like being skinny neck vessel that is really large and really uncomfortable and filled with bitterness and filled with pie. Not to mention that Skinny Neck Vessel was shot and killed for cheating at cards in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Huge and far from home and right between the eyes. That's God's point of view. <laughs>